I found it interesting that the title of my message was the exact, exact thing that was asked of me when I first entered the property this morning. When I got out of my car, someone asked me this question, and this is the title of my message. Put it up there. Right. What time is it? <laughs> what time is it? Have you wondered that yourself? Now, I'm going to admit something that I shouldn't admit, but you'll understand it as I, as I get into it to explain this. Yesterday morning, if you're, you're much more spiritual than this and you get up with the birds, that's okay with me. I don't care. But yesterday morning, as we were rousing ourselves, Evelyn says, we've got to get up. It's almost 9 o'clock. <laughs> I was having a great time. I didn't necessarily want to get up. <laughs> so this was my statement to her. I said, that's an irrelevant number. <laughs> that's an irrelevant number. It doesn't mean anything. As a matter of fact, the next thing I have scheduled that I have to be at is in a totally different time zone. This morning. We got rid of daylight savings time. So this is a different time zone than yesterday. So the numbers today are different than the numbers yesterday. So yesterday's numbers were irrelevant. Right? And if, if it wasn't not daylight savings, I could go to Central, get one of those numbers. Or I could go to Mountain and get that number if I want to. Who says I can't? It's just a number. But, what time is it, really? It's probably one of the most frequently asked questions of all of us, and the answers to that question can vary according to where you are, what's going on, and so forth. But the truth is anytime, anywhere you ask that question, there is one answer right now. The time is right now. It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. It's not 10 minutes from now. It's not 10 minutes ago. It's right now. And in every one of our lives, we have to deal with the right now. We did some study in our Wednesday night service concerning some of the attributes and the attitudes of the different classes of, of, of uh, folks in our culture today. And one of, the, one of the classes deals totally with the moment, with survival for the moment. Another deals with the tomorrows. And everything's about preparing for tomorrow. And, and it's fine to prepare for tomorrow. But when it's consuming you and all that you do with this tomorrow, what are you going to do with right now? And there are those who are totally concerned with yesterday. They don't want to deal with now because they didn't like yesterday or they did like yesterday or George is bringing me all that money. Okay. <laughs> Sit right there, George. That'll be good. Thank you. That looks good. But what do you do with right now? Well, Scripture talks about that. And we're going to deal with two particular Scriptures and, and their response to the question of what time is it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I, I can't tell you how many people through the years that I've talked to about their soul have said to me, Someday, I, so, someday I'll, I'll, I'll get there. That's in my plan. But I... I want to do this first, and, and I want to live this way first, and, and there's some things I need to work through. Beloved, now is the only moment you can control. You cannot control your trip home. Not right now. You cannot control the doctor's diagnosis tomorrow. The only thing you know is right now. You don't even know your yesterdays. You say, well, I know where I was yesterday. But you don't know all that went on yesterday in your body, in your mind, in your life. How you got there, why you were there. Don't know. But I know that right now we are here under the anointing of the Holy Spirit 
that is powerful. We are here listening to the word that is life changing. We are here and right now your eternity is in the balance. Right now. The decision that some of you could make in the next 10 seconds could determine your eternity. Right now. It is the moment of salvation. All things are ready. The fullness of time have come. Galatians 4, 4 says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born into the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoptions as sons. That's been taken care of. We're not going to have to wait for the coming of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus has already come. Jesus has already died on the cross. He's already paid the penalty for your sin. He's already shed his blood to cleanse you from all sin. That's been taken care of. You don't have to wait for that. The invitation has been extended. In Matthew 11, 28, he says, Come to me. He's talking about those who labor, weary, heavy laden. But I want to tell you, if the laden or the weight of your life is the sin that besets you and the sin that is in, 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 engulfing and burdening your life, come to him. He is here and his invitation has been given to you. Right now, you are invited to come to the Savior. Right now. The invitation is depicted in March 22 as an invitation to a wedding feast. One of the old hymns says, All things are ready. Come to the feast. Come for the table now is spread. Everything you need for eternal glory has been purchased, has been provided, and is ready. It's ready for you. There's not one thing that is still under construction in heaven. He said, well, he said he's going to prepare a place for me. I promise you, if it's time, it's ready. It's ready. The church has been established for he promised that he would build his church. The saved has been added to it, and it is God's will that they continue to be added to it. Until the moment that the trump sounds, the voice of the archangel cries forth, the church will continue to be available and to offer all that God ordained and intended for it to when he sent his son. And you can be in it. The gospel has been revealed. I'm thankful that we're not a part of that, that uh, what is it, uh, something 40 window? That space section of our world that has not really received a clear enough message of the gospel of Jesus Christ where they can make a clear decision. Aren't you glad that we're not sitting here today ignorant of the gospel of Jesus Christ? I'm thankful for the things that, that, that my parents and that life has afforded me. One of the gifts of my life is the science of music. I love not just singing and playing. I love the science of music. I love the language of music. I, I like looking at that chicken scratch. The little dots and the flags and, 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 and the sticks and the lines. And, and to be able to understand that language. It was a gift that my parents gave me as a teenager. And one of the greatest gifts of my life. And I'm thankful for it. But let me tell you what I'm thankful for more. I'm thankful that when I was a little boy, my mom and dad explained to me about a man named Jesus. And that he loved me. And that he died for me. One of the greatest blessings of my life was afforded last evening. I've got a nephew. He's a nut. John's a nut. But he's a smart nut. And he, he's a uh, producer of television programs and radio programs. And he has every toy in the world. Electronic. Uh, 
and got them all. And, and he's on Facebook. And last night, I, it, it, there was a, a, a little thing and it had a little picture on it. It was a video. And it said, I asked my granddad to tell me a story and this is what he told me. And I started the little video and heard my dad say, in the book of Luke, told about a little girl and he quotes the entire Christmas story word for word from Luke parts of Matthew I'm thankful that that's the kind of home I was raised in that the gospel of Jesus Christ was afforded me as long ago as I can that may not be your story. I'm sorry if it's not. But let me tell you this. You're sitting here this morning. And over and over you have been told the gospel. You are not ignorant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No longer. You may have come into this room unaware of a man who died on a cross for you. But you're not unaware now. You may have not known what the blood of Jesus Christ stood for, but you're not aware of that now. You may not have been, ever been told that if you call upon Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive your sins, that he will come in and cleanse you from all sin and all unrighteousness and give you eternity in his presence. You may not have known that, but you know it now. Now is the time I don't know where I'm going to have lunch. Hmm. Got some ideas. But I also know this. I'm not going to decide until I talk to her. <laughs> Understand? And I don't know what route I'm going to take to get there. But when it's time, I'll know. This morning, it's time. Right now. Or you need to determine how you're going to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as I said even last Sunday in the message, let me repeat it. Now may be the only time you have. We don't know. We just don't. One more response to this question of what time is it is in Romans chapter 13. Verse 11, and I'm not going to have time to go into it in depth. And it's probably too small for you to read, so let me read it for you. And we'll pretty much let that suffice for the message of this portion of the scripture. Romans 13, starting with verse 11. Do this, knowing the time. What time is it? Now, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It is time for our salvation. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. When? Now. Right now. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly. As in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh 